So lately at work, a coworker and I have been kind of refactoring a lot of our Terraform code on our project. And I figured, hey, why not just make a video to teach you all a little bit about what Terraform is and how you can use it for your infrastructure as code tool. So at work, we deploy everything onto AWS and we have multiple environments. So we have a prod environment, we have a, like a, a test environment, a staging environment. And each of these environments have a bunch of different AWS resources. For example, we have like DynamoDB, Elasticsearch, we have Lambdas, we have SQS queues, we have SES for sending out emails. We have a lot of stuff. And so in order to make sure that developers can have a completely replicated environment with a click of a button, you end up having to use something called a infrastructure as code tool. And we use Terraform on our project. There's other things as well. I think Pulumi is a good one that people talk about. There's SST, which I've talked about on my project, which uses AWS CDK under the hood. But I would say Terraform is one of the lead ways that you can like deploy your cloud infrastructure using code. So what is Terraform? It's basically a domain specific language that allows you to provision different things on Amazon, such as like S3 buckets, uh, all those resources I just mentioned by writing code. And Terraform has different providers. So like if you are working on AWS Google Cloud Compute, you can actually bring in providers to spin up resources inside of Google. Uh, let's say you're using Microsoft Azure, you could deploy resources there as well. So what I wanna do in this video is just deploy a couple of simple resources to AWS and maybe walk you through some of the things that I know. This isn't gonna be like a deep dive into Terraform. This is just gonna be like, hey, this is what it is. Hopefully this helps you understand something in the future. Obviously, before you get started with something new, I would go and read up on the best practices. There's this nice website here, terraformbestpractices.com. They have an example of different project sizes. And as your project gets larger, you can kind of follow their examples. We're gonna start with small, keep it simple. I'm gonna go to this Git repo here. And the way Terraform works is you typically have some type of files that kind of look like this. You have variables where you can define what things you want to be dynamic when you're provisioning your cloud environment. You have outputs that could be used for basically taking outputs from one module and piping them into another module or printing them out to the console when your Terraform apply is done running. You have this TF vars file where you can define variables, um, like kind of hard coded variables per environment. And then you have main.tf and a bunch of other TF files you can define your resources. So I'm not going to actually go into that. We're gonna to try to keep this simple. Let's go and make a main.tf. And I do have a Terraform extension installed right now so that it kind of does syntax highlighting for me. So let's start with something simple. Let's just try to create an S3 bucket inside my own AWS account. So if I go over here to S3, we wanna see if there's a way we can provision just by writing code a bucket that we can store files into. So let's go to over here to the AWS provider. So like I mentioned, there's different providers on Terraform. We care about the AWS one. So let's just go ahead and grab these blocks. I'm gonna paste them right here inside of main.tf. And what this is basically saying is, when I run this Terraform code, I wanna make sure that I have the AWS provider installed. You can kind of use version locking here. And when you run it, it's gonna pull down your AWS packages so that you can spin up different AWS resources. And over here, we're just scoping the provider to use ES West one, but you could change it and you can have multiple regions set up if you want to. So let's go and look through here. So let's go over here. I'm gonna type in bucket and we're gonna see if we can find an S3 bucket. Here's a resource, S3 bucket. If you scroll down, they give you an example of how you can create a private bucket with tags. So the way Terraform works is you copy this, you go over here, you paste it in, and you can add whatever tags you want here. We actually won't use tags, we'll keep this simple. But the breakdown of this syntax is you have a keyword, resource provider Terraform, followed by, this is the resource type. So if you look over here, there's different resource types. And then example is what you wanna name it. So I'm gonna say my special file bucket, okay? You name this whatever you want, but you can kind of reference this resource other way in your code by you know, I'll show you in a second. So don't get confused with this. This is the resource name that you've customized, but over here, this is the actual bucket name. So we can name this my special file bucket WDC. And additionally, um, you know, let's just, and let's just keep it like that. So, okay, so the first thing you need to do is I do have Terraform installed. And the way I manage my Terraform is I use something called TFENV. 
So TF-ENV allows you to install different versions of Terraform. So I can like do a TF-ENV install, that'll pull in a version, and I can say TF-ENV use, and I can switch different versions. Now the reason you want this is just like NPM, like versions change, you have to update them, and as you deploy to different environments, you need to make sure you're on the correct Terraform version for that environment, such as staging, prod, test, whatever. So the first thing we're gonna do, if you have a brand new Terraform project, you can say Terraform init. And basically bring in all the provider code that I talked about. If you look over here, you've got a Terraform file. And inside of this, there's a bunch of stuff. Here's a Terraform provider uh, binary, it looks like. Um, and that's used for deploying out all of the AWS specific resources that you might need. Secondly, you can actually import third-party GitHub repos as modules. So like, we won't cover that in this video probably, but if you do find a third-party module in GitHub, you can actually point to it. And when you do a GitHub init, it's gonna pull in that code. So after you've initialized a project, let's run a Terraform plan. Okay, so that's gonna run through your Terraform code and it's gonna figure out what resources does it need to actually create on your AWS account. I already have my credentials set up on my machine, so I don't have to like worry about that. But if you look through here, it's gonna create this plan file and it's gonna tell you after you actually apply these changes, this is what's gonna be created in your AWS account. So it's gonna create a bucket here are the configurations of that bucket. It's gonna add one thing. This is super important because as you have a larger system with thousands of resources, if you do a plan and it says it's gonna destroy something, you wanna make sure that it's not accidentally destroying your database or accidentally destroying like your S3 bucket that stores all your user data. Uh, there's different lifecycle rules you can attach to resources to basically prevent stuff from ever getting destroyed when doing a plan or apply. Um, but that's kind of it. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually specify an out file when you do a plan. So I'll just do this, TF plan. And that's gonna basically do the exact same thing as before. And let's just go ahead and open up that plan file and you'll see that it's like a, a bunch of weird encrypted base64, I don't know what this is. But anyway, this is the file that Terraform uses to figure out how to apply your changes to your current infrastructure. So right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that because we're just gonna keep this simple. All right, let's just go ahead and run a apply, which is the next step. Again, the out thing was like not necessary, but sometimes you might want to use that approach. Okay, so let's run a Terraform apply now. And again, this is going to show you what's going to be changed. And then you can type in if you want to actually change this or not. Okay, so down here, I'm going to say, yes, I want to apply these changes. And now that's actually going to create a bucket on my AWS account with the name that I specified. So if I go here and find this bucket name, go back to my AWS account, I should be able to click refresh. I now have an extra bucket and I can find that bucket right there. So super simple, but again, there's tons of different resources. If you want like a DynamoDB table, you can go here and find DynamoDB table and you can create a Terraform resource block to have a Dynamo table be created with different PKs and SKs and global secondary indexes, et cetera. Pretty much anything in AWS, they have a, um, a, a block you can basically use to get that deployed out. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of other things. So another file that you may end up using is called a variables.tf file. This is where you can specify what variables can be passed in. So for example, let's say you had a multi-environment deployment and you wanted this to say like fraud at the end. How would you get this interpolated into your bucket name? What you could do is you can go here and I can say variable. Let's just go ahead and say like ENB. And then we're gonna go ahead and just do this. So this is basically saying when I do a Terraform apply, there is a type of string variable we can pass and the default is dev, but you can override that if you want to. So once we have the variables declared, go to main.tf, and we can actually interpolate vars.env. Okay, so let's go over here. I'm gonna do a Terraform plan again. Uh, this is actually called var, not vars, my bad. Let's go ahead and run this. And now it should tell you that, hey, it's about to destroy that bucket that we just created because it needs to create a new one with a dev suffix on it now. So this is again, why you wanna do a plan and really inspect what's going on because maybe you didn't want to destroy that resource. But in our case, we could go ahead and just run this. Um, and that'll create a bucket with hyphen dev at the end. 
So the point of variables is that you can actually change them dynamically. So one way you can do that is you can actually set an environment variable. So I can say tf var is equal to um, broad. And I'll say terraform plan. And then when I run this plan, you'll see that it's going to try to create a bucket with prod suffix here. Okay, so that's one way. And that's how we do it on our project. We basically have like a bash script that changes a bunch of um, environment variable exports. Just to kind of show you, I'm going to go ahead and just run a plan here. And then I'm going to do an apply. And then I'm also going to say auto approve. So it doesn't ask me yes or no. It's just going to go ahead and make the changes. It's going to delete the existing bucket. It creates a new bucket. And now we should see a bucket with the same name on our environments. So let's go here and you see that it says prod now. Now, another thing that's important to understand is often when your Terraform gets more complicated, you're going to break up your code into modules. So you might have a folder here called modules. And then you might have something here called like, I don't know, storage. And then you can actually have a main.tf inside of this storage subdirectory. And then I can take this resource and I can move it into this storage module. And then here I can actually reference that module. So I could say like my S3 bucket. And then we're going to go ahead and say source is equal to modules storage like this. And if you have variables you want to pass in, so for example, we did have a variable, I can move that into there. And I can say env is equal to, um, we'll say var.env. And we're going to actually keep this in two levels. So now we have a top level environment variable that you can declare. But then this module has its own variables that uh, it might take in. So it's kind of like defining a function that has some inputs and outputs. And then in our main tf, we can call into that module. So let's try running a plan. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up here. Let's plan it. Um, you do have to run a Terraform init first. Even though the module is local, I think Terraform has to figure out like where that thing lives. Let's do a plan. That should be able to look into the module. It figures out that, hey, I need to deploy a bucket called this. And if we try running this, it's actually going to give us some issues. But let me just show you. Okay, so if you run this, notice that it says that a bucket already exists. Now, the reason it's giving you this is because when you move resources around, Terraform gets confused because it's like, hey, I already have a resource defined in my Terraform state, but now I'm trying to, I'm, I'm being told to create another one that's defined somewhere else. So one approach that you can do for this is there's a Terraform move command and a Terraform move block. So I'd highly recommend if you're going to start using Terraform, read through the refactoring guide because there is a lot of stuff that you're going to run into that makes it very hard to work with Terraform unless you understand how to refactor. So there is a move block that you can potentially use. There's also a, a CLI command you can use. But whenever you move stuff around, you need to basically specify like where did this thing just get moved from? And so what you can do is um, I can go ahead and say, I want to say that this thing was moved. Actually, I'm going to put this at the top level here. I'm going to use this move block. And I'm going to say from, and let's look at this output because this thing got a little confused. I'm going to say this dot, my special bucket. This is where it used to live. And we're basically just using the resource name as what it used to be. And then it got moved to module, my S3 bucket. And then let's look at where this thing is. So here... And then let's do this. Okay, so now when I do a plan, it's going to say that, okay, well, I know that it's the exact same bucket, like the physical bucket is the same. So I don't need to like try to create it a new one with the same name or like destroy the other one. So let's just go ahead and auto approve and see um, what happens. This thing should work now. And it didn't actually change anything, right? Although it did say one added. It didn't really um, delete the bucket or create a new one because it figured out inside a Terraform state that all we did was logically rename a module location. Um, so that's kind of the gist of it, right? Basically, Terraform is these files. You define resources. You break them up into smaller modules. You import these modules from other files. You're going to end up having to figure out how to refactor Terraform code. You have variables that you can define. You have outputs that you can define. Basically, all of these resources after you've created them you can access different outputs from those. So for example, 
let's say I wanted to get the bucket arn. So inside of storage here, I can say outputs.tf. Then I can say output. And then I'm going to say my bucket arn. And then we're going to go ahead and just do value of this. So it's very important to specify that Terraform works at a directory level. So everything inside the storage directory is basically a module and you can reference any other resource inside that same directory. So over here, if I look at main, notice we have this resource here, AWS S3 bucket, and then this special bucket here. So I'm going to go ahead and access this. And what we're saying is once you've created this S3 bucket resource, if I go and look at the documentation, which is over here, go here, let's open that. Typically at the very end, there is a, a place that tells you what the outputs are. So down here, attribute reference. So all of these are things that you can get from the bucket when it's created. So in our case, the ARN, the ID, the bucket domain name. So ARN is what we're able to do to access that ARN here. And so we're saying basically when this module is finished running and provisioning, we should have access to an output called my bucket ARN. Okay, so let's go over here to main, and then we should be able to access that wherever we want. So I can say module dot my S3 bucket dot, and then that's our output. So if you want to use this ARN in another resource, such as like an IAM policy or permission, you can do that. You can also just output this. So I can say outputs.tf, and then we're going to go ahead and use this. I'll say output testing value is equal to this. Um, and now I think after I run Terraform apply or plan, maybe let's run the plan first. Um, notice that it did print out the ARN here. Okay, so we have access to the ARN. Just go ahead and apply it real quick. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see outputs. And the reason this is happening is because we added an outputs to the main top level thing we're running the apply to. And that's grabbing the output from the module, which is basically going to resolve the ARN and print that to the console. And again, the reason you're doing this is because if you have multiple Terraform modules that are applied as separate deployable things, you need to get the information from one and pass it to the other. There's other ways you can kind of reference Terraform state from inside of other modules, but I won't kind of dive into that. Yeah, honestly, I think that covers a majority of it. Now, I will say that as you build out a real system, you don't want to have this Terraform state stuff locally. There is a way to basically have this Terraform state be stored in a remote S3 bucket. And that's what I would probably recommend, especially if you have CICD pipeline, you have multiple people trying to apply changes to the same environment. You don't want this to be kind of maintained locally on your laptop. You want this to be stored somewhere such as a bucket. But if you look at it, the TF state basically keeps track of what is the current running state of your environment. If you kind of scroll through here, I mean, it's a bunch of information. But the TF state file is what it's going to use to figure out when you do a plan, it's going to compare the current code that you have against the current state of your environment. And that's how it figures out what to add, what to modify and what to delete. So this state file is very important. And um, if you get in here and start modifying stuff by hand, you can get into a sticky situation. Discussion about Terraform state is a whole nother topic. So I won't get into that. But overall, that is my quick crash course into Terraform, how you can use it to declare resources, use the AWS provider, how to have variables that you can pass in to dynamically change things based on your environment, how to have outputs, how to create modules. And I hope that was a good overview. I know it's pretty quick. I know I'm all over the place, but I just wanted to share that with you all because I think it's interesting to understand, especially if you haven't been exposed to infrastructure as code before, because this is something that you are more than likely going to be end up using if you have a larger system that's touching AWS. All right, that's it. Have a good day and happy coding.